Hello everyone, Ryan here. So I realize it's been a while since the last time I did a really big uh, library book haul. So I figured I was overdue. So I'll just get right into it here. Following our some books I recently checked out from my local library. Uh, first is an audiobook. It is titled The Last American Vampire. It's by Seth Graham Smith. Uh, this is actually like a follow-up to The Vampire Hunter, which is by the same author, uh, or rather, Abraham Lincoln, The Vampire Hunter. And if you haven't, haven't read that book, I do recommend reading it. Obviously, I know there was a movie adaptation, but that, that movie adaptation is complete crap. Uh, definitely, the book... Obviously, much better, much more detailed. Uh, also, I mean, just the writing style. I thoroughly enjoyed the writing style. Of course, I read that quite some time ago. But this is like a follow-up, and it pretty much picks up uh, where that one left off. So, uh, But this one focuses more on the uh, main vampire character. So yeah. Next one I checked out is titled An Unquiet Mind by K. Redfield Jameson. It's a memoir of moods and madness. Um, this just looked interesting to me. Granted, I know it's uh, pretty old. Uh, I don't even know when exactly when this was published. Sometime in like 1995, um, but it seemed interesting to me because uh, essentially the author writes about her own experiences with uh, depression. I believe, yeah, trying to understand her own uh, manic depression, and that's a subject that I'm always interested in reading about, learning a little more about. So, check this one out. Next one I checked out is a graphic novel. It's titled uh, The World Below by Paul Chadwick. Uh, of course, I never heard of this before. I saw it at the library. I skimmed through it. It looked pretty interesting. Uh, supposedly it has something to do with there's a, a hole in the ground and a tiny flying machine emerges from this hole in the ground. And this guy named Charles uh, decides to investigate it along with a group of friends, something like that. So I guess to me it kind of seems similar to uh, like Journey to the Center of the Earth, except this is supposed to be like much more action-packed. And yeah, very intriguing. It seemed intriguing to me, so... Next one I checked out is another graphic novel. It's titled uh, Batwoman. Yeah. Batwoman is by Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams. J.H. Williams III. Uh, I gotta admit, I've, I haven't read anything about Batwoman. And of course, don't confuse it with Batgirl, because Batwoman is actually a different character in Batgirl. Uh, the thing that's interesting is Bad Woman is, in fact, uh, I believe, the first, I want to say, yeah, the first uh, gay female DC Comics character. Yeah, I believe. I mean, that's what the synopsis mentions. Um, I do remember a while ago I saw, like, a short animated thing with Batgirl. Uh, here's an example of the awesome artwork. And, yeah, I, I, a while ago I saw this short animated thing, or rather with Batwoman. Uh, and I liked the character a lot, so I wanted to read up more about her. She's definitely a very complex, uh, in a way it kind of reminds me of Batman, but not, not entirely. So, yeah. Definitely interesting. 
Next one I checked out is Chuck Klosterman X. And I've read Chuck Klosterman's, some of his work in the past. Uh, though it's been a while since the last time I read anything by him. I think, in fact, the last time uh, I listened to an audiobook of his, which was, I don't know, that was a while ago. I can't even remember the title. I think it was something like, But What If We're Wrong? I reviewed that. Uh, I'll provide a link to that review if you want to check that out. And then also I read and reviewed another book of his titled uh, Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. That was also very interesting. So yeah, I'm a fan of Klosterman's uh, writing. Except that uh, the only thing I don't like is uh, he does write about... He makes a lot of sports references, and I'm not a big sports guy. Uh, but I like everything else he writes about, because he writes about music and pop culture, uh, TV, TV shows, movies. And he has this, this really interesting way of like uh, connecting different things together and making it all seem like essentially uh, everything, like everything that pe most people are into can be considered completely absurd, but also highly important. So, yeah. Uh, this is a, a new collection of his uh, articles uh, because over the years, I think he's been writing articles for different magazines and newspapers for like over the past 20 some odd years or something. So yeah, I checked this one out. Uh, I also like the pages of this that are black, just completely black. So, I don't know, it seemed interesting to me. Let me know if any of you have, uh read this or heard any good things about it. Next one I checked out is Talking to Animals by John Katz. Uh, how you can understand animals and they can understand you. This one, I don't know, I just, I checked it out kind of on a whim because it seemed a little interesting to me. Uh, and I gotta admit, I've always been one of those people that Sometimes, like, uh, like when I look at my dog, uh, though technically he's not really my dog, but the family dog, uh, whenever I look at our family dog, who's, uh, his name's Oreo, uh, from time to time I do kind of wonder, like, what is he thinking, uh, or rather, more, more specifically, you know, what is he trying to say at this particular moment? Uh, granted, I, I think... Usually, most of the time, it's like, uh, for most dogs, you know, they really only care about, like, you know, sleeping, uh, sleeping, eating, uh, licking themselves, running around in circles. I don't know. But this seemed interesting, because it's not just about dogs, it's about the entire animal kingdom, essentially, for the most part. I don't know. Seemed interesting. Next one I got is titled Composting Basics, All the Skills and Tools You Need to Get Started. Uh, composting is actually something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I have made several attempts before in the past, never really panned out. Uh, definitely this year, I gotta, uh, I gotta buckle down this year and just do it. Uh, because, yeah, composting is definitely... An important part of starting your own uh, garden at home so yeah and actually to me it does seem like uh, obviously it's kind of difficult to start but pretty much once you start doing it and have been doing it for a while it becomes easier so uh, Another one I checked out is titled Men Without Women. Uh, it's a collection of short stories, of course, by Haruki Murakami. Murakami. Of course, I'm familiar with this author, uh, though I've yet to read any of his uh, larger stuff, like his novels. 
Uh, so I wanted to start reading something shorter by him. And this, this seems a good length. Uh, just a collection of stories. Uh, though I don't really know much more than that. I'll have to like start uh, looking through this later today. So yeah, let me know if you've heard of this as well. If it's any good. Another one I got is by David Sedaris. It's Theft by Finding Diaries. Uh, 1977 to 2002. And this is supposed to be like a, a collection of like journal entries, different journal entries by David Sedaris. And yeah, it just seems very interesting. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with David Sedaris. Uh, I like that. Mo to me, most of his writing seems to be uh, pretty satirical. Uh, so yeah, this seems interesting. Next one I got is uh, pretty short, Six Scary Stories, selected and introduced by Stephen King. So, I believe Stephen King's birthday is this month, or it might have already passed, I'm not sure. Uh, and this one just seemed interesting because I wanted to start getting back into reading uh, horror stuff, but I didn't want to start with anything too big, and I figured... This seems pretty good because it's a bunch of short stories that are selected by Stephen King himself. So, uh. Next one I checked out is titled De-Extinction, The Science of Bringing Lost Species Back to Life. And this is another subject that has always interested me. You know, the fact that you can find, like, frozen scientists find like frozen woolly mammoth and they're able to extract the DNA and then depending on I guess how much they're able to distract or to extract just, uh, depending on how much they're able to extract and if like it's, I guess the DNA is not too compromised they can actually begin the process of attempting to clone say a woolly mammoth uh, of course, the, the process can be applied to other other things, too. So, yeah, this is, I believe, run for young adults. Looks like it's pretty short, but also uh, provides some basic information on the whole thing, so... Last one I checked out is a graphic novel version of The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury, of course, uh, wrote a lot of well-known stuff. Uh, he's also one of my favorite uh, science fiction authors. I have read The Martian Chronicles, uh, the actual novel, or I guess it's like a novella, I guess, short novel. So this is a uh, graphic novel version of that. And which is interesting to me, because I remember when I read The Martian Chronicles, I did kind of wish there was maybe a couple, a couple of illustrations here and there. Uh, of course, essentially in The Martian Chronicles, it's all about the colonization of Mars and uh, how uh, when the first uh, colonists arrive, they encounter Martians for the first time, and you know a whole bunch of complications arise, and it's very interesting. Definitely, if you haven't read it, I do recommend it. Uh, yeah, and this graphic novel just for me it seemed like a really good idea. Uh, I wish uh, this came out a lot sooner, but hey, so, uh, so uh, that's pretty much it for my 
this library book haul. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if any of you have heard of any of these titles or if you've read them. Also, if you can recommend similar titles, that'd be awesome. Uh, thanks to everybody who's currently subscribed. I do appreciate it. And that'll do it. So, as always, don't forget. Till next time, keep it real. Keep on rocking. Peace.